For more than two years, you never thought we would shift gears to a different investigative strategy, but we have. We likely have interviewed you or someone close to you. We know that this is about power to you. And you want to know what we know. And one day, you will. Superintendent Doug Carter there, also in the background, but he didn't say anything. That was Sheriff Tobe Lesenby. Want to bring back our panel. Maureen, do you think that was for optics to have the local sheriff in the background, then the superintendent doing all the talking? Yes, I think a lot of it was uh, uh, part of a um, plan to, first of all, lure the person in, the offender. I think that giving everyone four days for uh, a press conference gave this offender enough time to at least get there if, if uh, he was able to. And so they wanted him to be there. They had everyone sign in, and I was really, really hoping that this thing would just get um, finished that very day. So yeah, I think it was, um, a lot of it seemed to me like um, stuff I've heard in um, profiles from the behavioral mm -hmm. analysis unit at the FBI. Calling the, him a coward. Yeah, it's it's exactly. They they. You asked earlier about his voice and if the FBI had looked into that. I'm confident that that would have been part of the profile, and that's part of the stuff that they talked about. And they said that, you know, for so long everyone was saying that um, the initial person was Mr. Boogeyman from mm -hmm. far, far yeah. away. And yeah. then when they really looked at it, they looked at what happened, where it was, the location, the sound of his voice. Th these people put everything together. And when you talk about a room full of 10-pound brains, mm -hmm. it's it's exhilarating. I want to mention one more thing that stood out to me during this press presser that I hadn't heard before, is the superintendent said, these girls were brutally murdered. What kind of a coward would do that, Joey? You know, on that point, Susan, it raises to mind something very significant. And this is your bailiwick, JSM, uh, Joseph Scott Morgan, and uh, maybe Maureen, you could address it, but that's the DNA and the forensic aspect of the case. Mm -hmm. If you look at a killing and you look at the brutality of it, right, and Maureen and I were speaking about is there any blood that he might have left in terms of being cut, uh, what other DNA was gleaned from, I hate to say, the bodies of these, this 14 and 13 year old when they mm -hmm. were seen. Right. And I'm surprised I haven't heard more about the DNA and perhaps it is because they're not, he's not in the database or whoever did this isn't in the database, but so much can be learned from that. Yeah, right? I, think that, I think that you're right, Joey. And one of the things that's, that's curious about this is that they have held, held everything back in this particular investigation. However, one of the things they have said from Jump Street, Susan, is this idea that we have DNA. They've said that mm -hmm. several times. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that, that's a big point of order. Now, what is the origin of that DNA? Is it blood or is it semen? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I gotta tell you, I gotta be honest with you, uh, I, I'm thinking that this, there, there are some, uh, some really nasty issues that are involved here, not to mention the fact that, we, that he had mentioned that this is a particularly violent crime. This sounds very personal. Yep. This sounds like that they are just, in, he, this guy is engaged. I don't know if he was perhaps stalking one of these girls, perhaps, mm -hmm. and just attacked. Just for our viewers, I'm sure our viewers are thinking, why don't they release more information? And I'll let anybody handle it. Go ahead, Maureen. There's a like, wall of Because the people are going, come on, if you know, why don't that. you tell yeah. us? Okay, Won't we got, that help? We got 1,600 um, tips since the, since the presser, yeah. right? If we, they know exactly what kind of car was abandoned at that other side. If they said, we need a white Toyota, that's all, they will get 600,000 mm -hmm. tips from as far away as you can possibly imagine. And every single one of those tips has to be run to ground and just chews up all your manpower. Right. They're much more comfortable with, when you come in to me and say, I saw a white Toyota. Oh, really? Yeah. Tell me more. Mm. Right. And I saw this, and I, blah, blah, blah. I saw right. a guy with a machete. A, well, or I saw a guy with a gun, depending on whatever it was. So you have to have a way to suss out yeah. people yeah. that are coming in with false confessions because like it or not, so many people in this country are lonely and they yeah. want to be a part of something mm -hmm. big and this is huge. The holdbacks let you check the, ver the veracity and the credibility of the information that you're getting. So they do know way more than we know. But it's interesting to me, Susan, that they'll say that they have the DNA but they're not putting it out there. And to me, 
To answer Mike's question, that's the sort of Damocles hanging over the killer's head. There is a wall of secrecy, there though, that is. I felt when I was there. But I think they should amp up the information on the DNA, that we have mm -hmm. it. They don't have to say where they got it. But the bottom line is that if they think that, oh, my gosh, if I spit on the sidewalk, mm -hmm. somebody could swab right. that. If I throw out my plastic fork at McDonald's, somebody could grab that. They're looking for changes in behavior that are definite reactions to this press conference. Well, yes. along those lines, that's exactly right. And that's what they're looking for and when they have everyone in this town like you said looking watching left right it. and center yep. they're watching someone drink something and put it down right. and then <laughs> and that's gonna put be the their tip pocket they're looking yep. for but why you why you poking yeah. at the killer mm -hmm. why are you you're a coward this is about power to he, you it was you like want to know what we know holding him he yeah, even exactly. looked directly in the camera and said the way you left these girls is not the way they are feeling right now mm -hmm. that's when I was taken aback saying mm -hmm. how were they left what did yeah. that crime scene look like, Joey? Yeah, I, I think you need a, to poke at the killer to get them out, maybe to get them out of their comfort zone, get them out of their daily routine, have them slip up, have them do something interesting. But it's interesting, Casey, because what you mentioned in terms of the spitting on the sidewalk, that's real. And what's real about that is that if they do, if the police have forensic evidence that is DNA evidence, and they don't have a, you have a database generally you go to. And if the person's DNA profile is in that database, it's a match, boom, you're close right. to getting where you need to be. In the event it's not, mm -hmm. and you isolate it down to a few people, a number of people now, you the issue- You kind of built defense, don't you, Jerry? Yes, but the, <laughs> but the issue though really is if somebody drinks a soda, throws mm -hmm. it away, Police pick it up. Yeah. Somebody has a straw. Someone does something else. And that DNA could be used to see whether it's a match because they may have some indication that it's police as to who the person can be, just generally. And, and a lot of dumpster diving. Yeah, right. We do a lot of but it has stuff. to be in the public domain or they're going to get Joey Jackson as their defense oh. attorney, so to speak. No, but it's really <laughs> key because right. you don't yeah. want to lose a case because you violate the person's rights it's in the process big. of getting their DNA. In recent memory, though, there have been several cases that uh, come to mind for me mm -hmm. that have been solved based on a napkin, a contaminated oh, yeah. mm -hmm. napkin, a contaminated uh, coffee cup, yep. uh, cigarette butt, those sorts of things. So it does, all these things that we do in, in normal everyday mm -hmm. life, it makes this person, they're sitting on a pincushion right now Paranoia. because every, yes. yeah, it, and it, briefly, it's a driver behind. And briefly on the issue in terms of Casey saying, hey, look, you know, you have a built in defense. And here's what that is. When you, for example, drink a soda, you throw it out, you have a straw, you throw it out, something like that, it's abandoned. And as a result of that, police take it, they pick right. it up, they analyze it, it's all good, it could be used against you. In the event that that's not the case and you overreach mm -hmm. and there's no warrant to be issued, now you have a problem. And what you Big. don't want to do is go wrong in a case like this where you're yep. putting your blood, sweat, and tears into it and you're so close, you make that misstep and defense attorney sees upon that to throw out the There's edge. a lot of armchair detectives here. Even my mom is so invested <laughs> in this texting me. Right. Why don't we just grab one of their drinks and do what you were talking right. about because they're so invested in these two little girls, innocent Everyone girls, yeah. going to the bridge to have a day off, a makeup snow day, and being brutally murdered. Just innocence taken away from the town. Absolutely.